Hi, I'm your host, Christian Cristiano. Welcome to Wellness for Realists, where we help you improve your life. 150 million people worldwide are practicing it, and top executives have touted it as a key ingredient of success. The health benefits far outweigh prescription medication and include lowered blood pressure, decreased anxiety, slowing of the aging process, and many others. What is it? Meditation. While we have limited documentation regarding the history of meditation, there is some evidence from 15,000 years ago that the hunter-gatherers were already using it. In addition, mystics and Sufis and other spiritualists have been using different forms of meditation to heighten awareness for centuries. There are many reasons people meditate, and one of them is to find more happiness in this world. Meditation can be practiced in many forms, such as awareness meditation, chakra meditation, meditation with chanting, and more. People often report having tried meditation, but they're not able to stick with it. It is important to create a formal practice with meditation, the same way many of you treat physical exercise, or even your visits to your healers. Meditation can and will work for you if you employ just a little persistence and determination. It can change your life forever. You're probably not surprised to hear that meditation begins with understanding your brain. The neocortex is divided into four lobes. The parietal lobe is specifically for visual and auditory functions. The temporal lobe right here is specifically for high level visual function. So you will use that part of your brain if you're watching something like a horse race, something moving quickly. The occipital lobe back here in the back of your head is what processes visual information also, but then sends that information to other parts of your brain. So if you're watching something that's gonna require your body to move afterwards, that's where that would be experienced. And finally, the frontal lobe, right here. This is where we experience our more evolved systems. Things like morality, love, happiness, joy and intelligence are all experienced right there in the frontal lobe. It's the frontal lobe in humans that separate us and distinguish us from other mammals. By focusing on our frontal lobes, we can learn to enhance all of those good feelings. With the help of fMRI machines, neuroscientists have now proven that through meditation, we actually create more neural activity in the frontal lobes and throughout the entire brain. What this means is that we can change the physiology of our brains with a regular meditation practice by activating the frontal lobes of the brain. This helps us to experience more serenity and love. By disciplining ourselves to sit and breathe twice a day, we're setting the stage to experience a more fulfilled life. And before you know it, your brain will actually start craving meditation. Another incredible byproduct of meditation is the slowing of cellular aging that occurs in the brain during your practice. What this translates into is proof that meditation actually slows down the aging process. And who doesn't want that? Personally, meditation is helping me overcome attention deficit disorder, which is allowing me to focus on what is truly important to me, bringing valuable information to the world and assisting you in your healing process. Today, we have Jacob Glass, non-denominational spiritual teacher, best-selling author of three books, and urban mystic. Jacob is a well-known speaker in Los Angeles, and at times, he fills in for Marianne Williamson. Jacob, thanks for coming in today. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Today, we're talking about meditation, as you know, and we would like to know what you do for your personal meditation practice. Most of the meditations that I do are what I would call guided visualizations. So I have recorded, actually I encourage people to do this particularly because you have your own phone where you can record your voice. So some of the meditations that I do are recorded in my own voice and I listen to them. Okay. And then they'll go into music. So that's a lot of what I, of my own personal meditation. And that's kind of what I do even in my groups when I'm working with people is I will do guided meditation before we go into silent meditation. Okay, and do you have any tapes on your website or anything like that where you I do actually have, sell? There's, no, there's a, on the resources link, I have a morning and evening meditation that you can download. It's an MP3. And okay, great. We'll get to that, that at free. the end of the segment. We'll show them your website so they can, so they can find that. Um, and how do you think meditation has personally helped you with your, with your life, 
uh, with your speaking? Well, I always tell people that I, what, I had anxiety disorders before it was trendy. <laughs> so as a very young child, I had a lot of anxiety. I had a lot of physical ailments that came from anxiety. I would break out in hives. And mm -hmm. so actually, um, I don't even know how old I was. I was very young when my mother gave me a book of self-hypnosis, which was kind of crazy. This was in the 1960s in rural Pennsylvania. And uh, she gave me this book that taught you how to, what I would say now is a kind of meditation. Oh. So it was about relaxing your body. And that's really what I do with people in my groups is I teach them how to drop their shoulders, relax their jaw, all of that stuff to get the body ready for the experience of quieting the mind. Okay, got it. And <clears throat> you mentioned quieting the mind just now. A lot of people will often say, I can't quiet my mind or I can't get my mind to stop running. Right. What do you say to those people who have that who have that challenge? Well, I think sometimes people are coming at it from the idea that they have to control their mind. Mm -hmm. And I always say the mind is like a puppy. You don't have a bad puppy or a good puppy. You just have a trained puppy or an untrained puppy. <laughs> so you're training the puppy mind. So that means very gentle, but very consistent. Got it. So, you can't lose patience with a puppy any more than you can with your mind. So if you think you're just going to sit down and start controlling your mind, you're not going to. And it's going to be different every time you do it. Sometimes it'll be easier. Sometimes it'll take a little bit more diligence. But the idea is that depending on what kind of meditation you're doing, a lot of what I have done in the past and because of what I speak about are workbook lessons from a book called A Course in Miracles. Mm. They give you, it's 365 days of daily meditations. So that gives you a central thought to bring to mind that you would repeat over the process of if you're gonna meditate for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes that would bring you back to whatever that thought is. So you understand that your mind is gonna wander mm -hmm. and then you just bring it back to the thought just like you would take the puppy and bring it back. You don't okay. get upset. You don't freak out. You just go, oh yeah, I went off. I wandered away. I was trying to be there. Just calmly bring it back again. So you give people something particular to focus on, a thought maybe, or a mantra of sorts, something for them to focus on so that their mind has something to do. So instead of stopping the mind, it's actually just focusing the mind. Is, is that right? I think it's pretty difficult to stop the mind for a Westerner. Uh -huh. Because we're really trained to have active minds. Yes, we are. We're proud of the, of the fact that we multitask. Mm -hmm. So if you're spending most of your time learning how to have a very active mind, the idea that you're just going to stop your mind, uh, that'd be like me sitting down and saying, I'm going to stop my heart now. It's <laughs> kind of an automatic thing. Sure. But you can have influence over your mind. And that's really what we're looking for is, I want to have influence over my mind. I yes. want to be able to guide my mind instead of just letting my, I always say your mind can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Absolutely. And so you want to make friends with your mind, not try to beat it into submission and make it do something. Absolutely. You're making friends with your mind. I like so that. So if you have a lot of anxiety or you're worried about something, that's going to be a different meditation sure. than if it's just a normal day. Right. So let's go there. There's a lot of anxiety in, in the world today. People are busy. Everyone's attention spans are shrinking. What would you recommend to people out there who have heightened levels of anxiety and very stressful jobs, which is a lot of people out there listening? Right. Right. What would you suggest for them? Well, I would say the idea that you would have sort of, a, as I do, a whole different set of ideas for meditation. So like I said, I have recorded meditations that I do that I will listen to uh, as opposed to just sitting and doing silent meditation. Sure. So if I'm very anxious, I will listen to a recorded meditation. Right. So okay. that if there's somebody who's taking me on this journey mm. of, okay, close your eyes, relax your tongue, drop your shoulders, relax your belly, let your arms grow limp, somebody that's going to start to soothe you into that place until you get used to doing it yourself. Sure, absolutely. Then you don't necessarily need somebody, but it, once you're, if you're just beginning the idea of, oh, that's right, I'm going to start with the body first. Yes. Let me get my body relaxed first. Okay. 
then I'm going to take this mental journey, whatever that is for me. Of, okay. I'm going to have my mantra or my Course in Miracles lesson or um, certainly in religious, they may have scriptures that they have like uh, something about your grace is my sufficiency. I know people who use that as just their mantra to take them into meditation. And they're repeating this during and their meditation. And they're repeating it from time to time, not maniacally. Sure, okay. But just from time <laughs> to time when you find your mind is wandering, then you bring it back to whatever is the central thought. Okay, I like it. So we've got a few minutes left here. Um, there's a lot of questions out there in the audience. I'd like to get some of those questions specifically for you. You wanna right. do that? Yeah. Great. So we have Mark Kramer who uh, sent us a a tweet from Minnesota and it says do you need to be still to meditate I used to think I was meditating when I was running what would you say to Mark I don't know you know I don't know Mark <laughs> so I have to I'd have to probably talk to Mark to know specifically about that but lots of people I would think are meditating when they're running there are people who are meditating when they're gardening there's walking meditation okay. it really is about focus if you think about meditation as a contemplation mm -hmm. it's a focus and a stillness of thought where you're moving in a particular direction and not distracted by a lot of other things so if you're really focused in your garden and that's bringing you that sense of just oneness with the garden mm -hmm. that's a kind of meditation that's a kind of contemplation if you're running and you've stopped that chattering mind mm -hmm. that's worried and anxious that's a kind of meditation so i can't just make a blanket statement of that's is or isn't meditation but if he thinks it's meditation then it's meditation excellent excellent yeah. great let's go to another one okay. um so this one is a tweet from virgil williams right here in los angeles and he asked how long should i meditate every day and is it important to do it daily what would you tell virgil <sighs> That's such a, you know, um, one of the, our American mystics, Joel Goldsmith, mm. would meditate so many times a day, but sometimes only for a minute. Mm. TM and practices like that will say do 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the evening. So it really depends on what works for you, where you feel like you're receiving benefit from it. Got it. You can sit, when, there's a line in The Course in Miracles that says, something to the effect of you could sit for an hour and achieve nothing or sit for two minutes and make that connection and achieve what you were trying to achieve, which is that calmness and that centeredness and that reconnection. That makes sense. Excellent. So whatever, all... When you feel like you're receiving benefit, you are. For sure. Great. These are all great answers. Thank you very much. We want to thank Jacob Glass. We're very honored to have him here today and invite all of you to go to his website, which is www.jacobglass.com. If there's only one thing that you all walk away with today, it's that we want you to sit and breathe and focus on your breath for at least five minutes a day to start. Find a quiet place where you won't be distracted, turn off your cell phone and computer, and let your loved ones know that you will not be available for the next five minutes or so. For your body position, you have options. The ideal is to sit in lotus position, shown here, but with a cushion under your butt to raise your hips higher than your knees. If you can't get into this position, adjust it to suit your body so that you are comfortable. For those of you that have to sit in a stool, that is fine too. Sit up with a straight back, and while keeping your head straight, maintain open eyes and look at the floor about three feet in front of you. If you need to lie down due to an injury, that is okay too. The only challenge here is that you may drift off if you lie down. Once you've found your position and have your eyes focused, simply begin to breathe in and out of your nose and count your breaths while you follow the air in and out of your lungs. Inhale, exhale, that's one. Inhale, exhale, that's two, until you get to 10. Then repeat, starting at one again. As far as your breath goes, breathe normally and not too deep, but not too shallow. If you lose count, and you might lose count in the beginning, just notice that you lost count and come back to number one again and start over. Focus your mind on your breath to begin. Starting out with once a day at five minutes is great. Once you are ready, we want you to add another five minute session at night. From there, you will work up to longer and longer sessions. 
I personally meditate every day for 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes at night, which is where studies show we get the biggest bang for our buck as far as brain benefits. That said, you will get benefits at shorter intervals too. We are here to help. So now that you're ready to start, be sure to follow up and let us know how you're doing. I will be heading back to the mountains at the end of this month for a six-day meditation retreat, and I will be sure to bring back as much valuable information as possible to help every one of you maintain your practice and take it to the next level. Thank you for joining us. And remember, meditation can make your life better.